Welcome to Mesozoic Park. Today we will be discussing the evolution of dinosaurs to birds. Take it away, Dr. Karina. During most of the Mesozoic, there were flying dinosaurs called pterosaurs. They had wings and could fly. As birds have both of these features, it can make sense to assume that birds evolved from pterosaurs. This just in. Birds did not evolve from pterosaurs. In fact, pterosaurs aren't even dinosaurs. Can you explain, Dr. Navi? Why certainly! You see, reptiles must have very specific characteristics in order to be classified as dinosaurs. While pterosaurs did live during the Mesozoic, they did not live predominantly on land. Their flying ability actually disqualifies them as a potential dinosaur. Despite the pterosaur's ability to fly, birds did not evolve from them. Pterosaurs had membraned wings, like bats. Recently, we, the scientific community, believe that pterosaurs climbed up cliffs and tossed themselves off, sailing much like a hang glider. It might interest you to know that there is an order of dinosaurs called bird-hipped, the Ornithischians. I believe that this is where the bird lineage starts. I mean, why else would we call them bird-hipped? Thank you for that valuable information. Now, can one of you tell us about the... Uh... Hold on. I, I'm just receiving more breaking news. Well, it looks like Dr. Navi is partially incorrect. Yes, while birds did not evolve from pterodactyls, they didn't evolve from Ornithischians either. I'm so confused. Don't worry, we got this. <clears throat> Birds share many, many characteristics with dinosaurs. Both have diapsid skulls, a skull structure with two holes behind each eye, although birds are highly modified. Both lay hard-shelled eggs and build nests to shelter those eggs. We, the most up-to-date scientific community, believe that birds evolved from theropods, bipedal carnivorous dinosaurs. All avians have a furcula or bush bones. This bone structure is meant to help birds withstand the rigor of flight. Wishbones first appeared in theropods. Moreover, both birds and theropods have pneumatized or hollow bones. This gives these creatures a lower body mass and allowed them to be faster and have space for air sacs, which in turn allowed for a larger amount of oxygen intake. Most non-aquatic avians have feet that resemble the clawed theropods' feet. In comparison, most other dinosaurs, including ornithischians, have elephantine feet. Tyrannosaurus rex's long tail was used for balance. Similarly, many birds, such as roadrunners, have long tail feathers that act in a similar manner. The ability to flap wings likely came from a semi-lunate carpal bone, as demonstrated by Deinonychus. This allowed the dinosaur to bend its wrist to the point where it can touch its arm. For comparison, humans can only bend their hands this far, whereas a Deinonychus and other dinosaurs like it could bend that far to the, touching the arm. This flexibility is shown in bird wings and helps them actively fly. Within this century, it has readily become accepted that some dinosaurs, especially theropods, had feathers on some parts of their body. However, flight feathers came later. That's fascinating. But are there any transitional species between theropods and birds? Why, yes there are. Archaeopteryx are a link between non-avian theropods and birds. These creatures first appeared in the Tritherian stage during the Upper Jurassic. Archaeopteryxes have a mixture of of theropod characteristics and characteristics later found in birds. Similar to Deinonychus, Archaeopteryxes have a jaw with sharp teeth. Modern birds do not have teeth. Archaeopteryxes have three clawed fingers, a hyperextensible second toe, a bony tail, and feathers. Similarly to birds, Archaeopteryxes had a wishbone, flight feathers, wings, and a partially reversed first toe bone. Archaeopteryxes were about 0.5 meters long, around the size of a European magpie. And that's all the time we have. Thank you very much. KT, bye. <laughs>